Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us here today. I'm very excited to welcome back one of our favorite presenters here at Topaz, Mr. John Barclay. Hey John. Hello, Nicole. Hello. He nice is here to, to present. Nice to be back. Sorry, sorry about that. I'm oh, no. on the uptake today. It's just <laughs> nice to be back as usual. <laughs> thanks. thanks for having me back, Nicole. Thank you for coming back. And uh, John is here to um, present Crafting Your Images with the new Topaz Restyle. He's going to be uh, showing off how he is actually working with this new program as well as uh, jumping into a couple other programs I think as well. So I'm super excited to see how he's been using it. So John is an award-winning freelance photographer and he's based out of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. He is a passionate photographer and enthusiastic workshop leader. He's also an inspirational speaker sharing his program, Dream, Believe, Create, to audiences around the country. John was personally selected by DeWitt Jones to participate in his healingimages.org project. And his work has been published in a number of magazines and books and has been used by us, Nick Software, Lens Baby, and others in advertising campaigns. Recently, John was the recipient of an excellent award from Black and White Magazine, and he is one of our favorite presenters and friends of Topaz, so we are always happy to have him. So with that, I will go ahead and turn this over to John. Just give me one second. All right, I'm, I'm waiting to see the, the box. Okay, I think that was my mistake there. Sorry oh, about that. There we go. It. Show my screen. How's that? I see it. Looking good. Good. Excellent. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity with a really great new piece of software. You folks have been you're hitting it out of the park here recently with lots of new programs. The clarity is just tremendous. I use it every day in my workflow now. Uh, and of course, you know the black and white is great, and adjust has been around and kind of the cornerstone of what makes us think about Topaz and how great. But this is a is a really unique new piece of software that's very different than the other things that you've been doing, which are really great for crafting your images in a more traditional manner. Although you can certainly affect them uh, with adjust and get sort of a pseudo or a faux HDRish look, but this program to me, uh, Restyle is really much more fun and creative and whimsical. Uh, a couple of people have said to me that it's like an iPhone type processing for a big boy camera image or big girl, whatever it might be. And, and I would agree with that. It, it really is. At first I didn't know what to think of it. I was overwhelmed by the thousand presets that Nicole put together for us. Um, but once I understood some of the search capabilities and how you can drill down to using your inspiration to figure out which ones you like, it makes a lot more sense. And so we're going to cover that and hopefully demystify the thousand looks. They're there for a reason. They're an important part of what's going on here in the background. So there's a lot to cover today. I'm going to spend probably a lot more time in the interface today and how to best use that interface than I normally would, but I think it's really important to do that so that you can uh, get beyond that overwhelmed feeling of the thousand presets that are there. So in order to do that, we're going to need to spend a little bit more time uh, with that. So let's get started. Um, just another, as I'm opening this image up, another uh, thought here is that to, to kind of get out of the way right up front, and that is that not all images are going to work with, with the restyle. There are going to be some that you're going to work on and say, you know, this just isn't happening for me. Uh, don't be surprised by that. On the other hand, there's going to be a number of images that will work well. So I'm going to hit the reset button in the bottom right, and let's get started talking about um, the interface here. It's somewhat familiar to what we've seen with other interfaces. They're getting to be uniform, which is nice. And so in the, starting in the top left, we have collections. And we can click on a collection that gives us a, uh, you know, that drills down there. So that's the first thing we can do is, is pick a collection to get a certain look. And then here we can roll over that and start to see what they are. And rather than go through the whole interface, I'm going to stay on this collection idea and address 
that from the left side. We'll get into the right side of the interface over here with the, the restyle and the basic a little bit later, but let's just stick with this idea of how do we start to get inspired by the looks first. So we go over collections, and for this one, I'll just pick street to pick something. And again, I can roll over all those presets that are there on the left side. But I think the easiest way to use the interface, at least for me, and I think it will be for you, is to go ahead and click the icon that shows the grid. And now what we have here is, again, an overwhelming number of presets that we can look at. But there's a couple of really important techniques here that you can use that will help you drill down. And so what I would encourage you to do is understand what these uh, icons do and why these panels of color are here. So the camera, what that does is that if you mark that, it will mark it as something that you're interested in for this session. It's important to understand that, for this session. So that means while Restyle is open for this particular session, anytime I click on a camera with whatever searching method I'm going to introduce you to, it will put it into a select folder, which we will then access up here. I'm at the top of the screen with this icon. We'll show you that in a minute. The star is so that you can permanently mark it as your favorite. So if I click the star on any of these today, no matter what time in the future that I go to use this software, it's going to remember that those tend to be the favorites that I like to go back to over and over again. Okay, And then we can search for keywords up at the top here. We'll talk about that. And then we can actually click on colors that are in the color strip and search that way to refine searches. So let's, let's go ahead and click a couple. I'm going to click the camera here. I'm going to click the camera on this one here. I'm going to keep scrolling down. I like this dark ecru. You know, I'm just going with inspiration here and saying, yeah, what kind of looks good? Early tangerines kind of interesting to me. Uh, you know, just doing a quick look through and find redwood contrast is kind of interesting. We might be able to work with that one. Um, and let's maybe pick one more. How about this dull hunter green? Okay, now I've been clicking on cameras. That's what I've been doing in the presets. So now let's go to the top of the screen. I'm pretty much in the top middle here where I'm circling. The very left icon is preview previously marked. So now we've already gotten rid of a lot of the clutter of that collection and we're focusing on just the ones that we're drawn to, that we're interested in. So how else can I continue to drill down? Well, what you need to understand is the, with these color strips, if I click on a color, it's going to bring me up throughout the whole database other presets that are going to be in that same ballpark, if you will. But it's only going to be referring to the primary and the secondary color. It's going, so it's not going to, so if you pick a color that's on the fifth or fourth color that's in, in the right side of the display that we'll talk about, recognize it's fine to click on that, like this orange, but what that's going to do is give you, and I'll click on it, it's going to give you presets based on the first and second, the, the two primary colors in the image. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of that in this particular one, so let's click on something like this. So I'm going to click on, I'm here on the third image over on the top. I'm going to click on the blue. Let's see what blue does. And you can see that it's going to go out and find all of the other presets that might have that blue color in there. And I can start to scroll through those, and I can click on the camera again. And now when I come back up to the top and click on the folder that has the camera on it, now I've added those presets. So hopefully you're starting to understand that even though there are a thousand different presets, you have tools that allow you to drill down very quickly and easily based on what is being in you know, you're, you're being inspired by, by the tonalities and looks. The other thing you're going to need to do is understand and once we get through the right side of the display and all the adjustments that you can make to these presets, you'll start to get a feel for whether something like, for instance, let this dark ecru here, a little dark around the car. 
doesn't trouble me in the least because I know I can alter that look and adjust for that later. So be mindful of that as you're looking through these that you know, don't be worried that it doesn't look perfect. That, that's fine. We have adjusting uh, that we can do to it or adjustments we can make to it and, and um, control. So let's, how about a couple other things here. Here's another way that you can search. Up here, uh, now I'm at the top right of the display, you see two tags. If I click on that tag, notice that what my uh, cursor looks like. It looks like two tags. If I click on a preset now with that tagged icon, or cursor I should say, it now is going to go find all of the other looks that are similar. So let's do that. I'm going to click on this one, and now it's gone out. See how wonderful that is? That one works really well, by the way. Um, so once you find one that you like, now go out and start clicking on a few more of these that you like, that you found, and some of notice it's coming up with others that I've already found, like this dull hunter green. Uh, this isn't bad, uh, and this is kind of unique here, so we'll add those to it. Now go back up here. All we're doing is cumulatively adding to the selections that we're making. Remember though, really important, this is going to be for this session only. If you see some things in here that you like, it would be best that you clicked on the star to make sure that you save those for future sessions, especially if you're working on similar images. You don't want to take all this work of drilling down and finding uh, a preset that you like for being in Cuba with Cuba cars that you might want to do a look and apply it to all of the images in that set. So you'd want to click the star. Okay, so we've covered how to use this folder. Obviously the star folder is going to be your uh, favorites and then the check folder is basically, let me check my notes here because it gets confusing. Um, okay, the checkbox is a history. It'll show you the history of the previously applied things that you've done. So think about the check as pretty much a history which shows all of the previous choices that you've made. So if you've gone and clicked on one, like this, let's take this this one here, click on it and we've applied it to the image. Now when we go back to look at a grid flow again, I can come up here and it'll show the ones that I've actually chosen to look on and work on. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to go back to my choices that I've made with the camera and we'll, let's do one last thing here before we start to move on beyond the interface here and look at some of the other things we can do. Let's maybe go up here and search. So how does that work? Well, if you, as you use the program, you're going to learn there's certain language that it has, there's certain colors that it calls up, whatever it might be. So I can come in here and I can start to look for things like OR and, whoops, I have to be able to spell. Orange. Let's see what orange brings up. So if I bring up the word orange, it brings up these choices. Let's see what we have. If I bring, uh, let's see, there's one I remember called A F T E R N O N, orange afternoon. Let's see if that shows up here. Orange light. There it is, orange afternoon. It's taken a minute to generate the preview. Doesn't matter. I'm going to click on the camera. Click on the folder with camera. It should be in there now. Let's go through these. I've gotten quite a few of them in there, haven't I? Yeah, there it is right here. So orange afternoon is here now in my palette. So let, let's go, or in my preview window. So let, let's just kind of review. I can click on the camera in any one of the search modes. It's going to put it into a collection of images for this session only. I can click a star to make it a favorite. I can do keyword searches. I can click the tag and click on any one of these images that I like. It'll go out and find similar looks of which I can choose and, and click the, the camera button again. Um, I can make favorites and put them in that favorite folder. I can go back and see what I've worked on in this session by clicking on that. That pretty much covers what I wanted to go over with for the drilling down and the searching and hopefully that's demystified. Um, the overwhelming feeling that a lot of people share when they look at this piece of software right away and hopefully that gets you feeling a lot better. So let's pick, let's pick orange afternoon. It's going to go out and apply that preset. 
So now that we understand how that works, and, and again, you can scroll over these. I really find that the grid view works well. And by the way, you have those same folders here that you had in the grid view. And one last thing on the left side here, way at the bottom, you can create a preset. So if you get work done beyond this, and again, back to that idea of you have a group of images that you want to apply this preset to, you would want to hit that save preset and call it something, put in keywords in that box so that now you have a preset that you can apply with the adjustments that you've made on the right side. And then you have similar things here. You can, But actually, this is new. Uh, the edit preset is new. If I hit that, it allows you now to say that you've created that preset, you can put a description, and you can add your own keywords and put it in your own collection before you couldn't do that. So even the presets that they've created at Topaz, you can edit, and you should. You should put in new keywords that help you find them easier. So that's new, and here you have a trash can, and uh, you have an import a preset. So if somebody else makes a preset, sends it to you, you can import it, or you can export a preset and send it to somebody and say, hey, you're going to love this one. And who knows, maybe Topaz will add those cool presets that you come up with to a piece of software. Okay, so now let's look at the right side. What do we have over here? Well, we have our typical navigator, loop view, mask view, and histogram, which are great tools to have, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have hue, saturation, and luminosity. Okay, so this is a little different. This is where, again, it's different than what you're used to. So when we click on hue, we would think that it's going to affect the hue <laughs> like we would think, but it doesn't. So it's going to take experimentation to see what it does. Saturation is going to work a little bit differently. It's going to take the primary color and saturate it, or it's going to desaturate it, right? Secondary color and do the same. Okay, so you have adjustment, or, or you can fine-tune the look. By the way, if you want to get back to default, just double-click the word on the left side, and that'll get you back. So that's another way. Luminosity, same thing. We can change the brightness or darkness of that particular color that's being used to create this look. So let's do that. Let's, let's leave that one down a little bit. Let's see what some of these other ones do. It's affecting the road around it, making it too dark. Uh, I think you're getting the idea. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but you can make some adjustments there. The texture strength is going to be different for every image. It's really uh, dependent upon the preset and what it's doing. Some of the presets have kind of a foggy, diffused look to them. Well, strength of the texture may affect that differently uh, than it does for something that's like this image. But essentially, that's, that just took, it's very subtle in this particular preset, or it can add some texture strength. OK, so that's how that works. But what we also have here is our friend. Now, you know what I'm going to do before we cover the mask? Let me go further down here. So let's go down to the basic. These are pretty, should be pretty self-evident. Temperature is almost acting like a white balance control. You can make it warmer or cooler. You can change the tint and the saturation, but I'm really, really grateful these are left in there. These have been added. This uh, the tone panel here of the black, midtones, and white was added in with clarity. I'm going to click on my histogram. Every time I use these tones adjustments, I want to see what's going on with my histogram. And notice on the left side, it's kind of blocked up. That would be evident by all the dark spots underneath this car. So with this, I have the ability to start brightening that up on the left side. Okay, and so I'm bringing my histogram over so it's not crashing by pulling this black levels to the right. Don't worry that it's sort of looking a little faded out. That's fine. I can bring that down a little bit as far as the brightness goes. I can even change the um, midtones a little bit. And then here's a magic slider, really important to know in this detail area. The structure slider is really adding what I would call localized contrast versus the, the um, sharpness slider is adding inherent sharpness, which would, it, it, they're different. So localized contrast is giving it that punch or pop, uh, more of the, uh, of the structure rather. So the structure slider, localized contrast, is giving you more of a pop uh, uh, 
contra more contrasting look again taking away some of that dull feeling to it whereas the sharpness is doing just that sharpening which does give you a feeling of contrast but not like the way the structure does so watch what this does here there you go so all that kind of hazy feeling I was getting here I can quickly take that away again just a, a little reminder here that's not always going to work that well it's on certain images where it's, it's giving you this faded or uh, you know uh, hazy type look or uh, foggy type look it's not going to do that it's, it's going to do probably the opposite so don't be surprised and certainly pull that slider both ways as you'll see me do in another image as we move on from here okay now let's talk about the mask Guess what we have? We have the same mass that they introduced again with clarity. What it allows us to do is do an edge aware choice where it's going to find the edges of what we're pointing to. Color, it can do a color aware, just a normal brush where it's painting you know, white or black is all it's doing. So we can use the brush that way with gradient masks. But this color range one is the really cool one still. So I'm going to click color range. It's going to, okay. Clicking color range. Why is it not? There we go. Okay, it automatically puts this green dot usually in the middle of your image. You just go click on that, and I'm going to pull it up to the sky, which got a little blown out with the the, the choice I made, uh, or the choice or the selection rather of the preset I made. And so I wanted to bring back, even though it was gray, I wanted gray's a color, white's kind of not. <laughs> and so I wanted to bring back some of that color. So an easy way to do that is use that color range selection in the mask and now we can adjust that. So I can change the size of it, make it a little smaller so that it's not getting that car. I can also change the sensitivity of it to only get up there in the sky. And I'm fine with it bleeding over a little bit. That's okay. So now you can see what that's done. It's allowed me to easily go and select that sky area and I could do that again if I wanted to uh, put it on the car and select the car for some reason or whatever it is in the image that you're working on that you want to mask out or hide that particular adjustment. So I'm going to click OK on that. Now here's something pretty cool. Let's say, but wait a minute, I want to use that same mask on my adjustments for the basic panel. Well, if I click open mask, and hopefully this will work because we found it didn't yesterday briefly, but if I click this new icon here on the right of this where it says reveal, hide, and so forth, that is, that's basically a copy and paste function. So where it says restyle, restyle means up the, the top tab, right? Now I'm on the basic tab here. If I click restyle, it should, and it did, thank you, it did put the identical mask that we created up here for the restyle tab, right? It's now placed that mask into the mask for the basic tab. Pretty cool. So you don't have to go back and redo that. You just click that little box on the right side and click, the, in this case, restyle. Obviously, if you had worked down here first, you go up here, you're going to click basic because you're going to want to get that to apply to the restyle area. All right. So let me just check my notes because I have lots of them for this one. Um, I think we've covered most of what I want to cover. So we've gone through the collections. We've talked about the grid view and how that works and how you can drill down. What time is it? Yeah, I knew it would take about 25 minutes. Holy cow. All right. And then we talked about the right side and how we can adjust the look, the restyle look, by changing the hue, saturation, and luminosity in those sliders and how sometimes they don't do quite what you think they're going to do, but it really does give you an awful lot of control. And then the basic panel and how that works. And to me, the key one here is this uh, tone panel as well as the structure slider and bringing back some of that uh, structure. And then we talked about the masking, how to use that mask, and we'll, we'll do that again uh, so that we, we cover that and we drill that home. And then we also talked about how to copy that mask with this icon here uh, that we might have used in another location. So I'm going to take a breath. Whew, that was a lot to cover. All right, so let's click OK. So what did we get? Let's go back. We started out with that photograph, which is a pretty realistic image of what it looked like. 
uh, in Cuba that day, and we created a stylized look. Look at these styles. Okay, so let's see how it works in real life in practical applications. This should work well. Let's see if we make that tad smaller there. All right, let's scroll my notes up here. And let's go into filter, restyle. This is the ubiquitous red chair at Eastern State Penitentiary. Everybody in the universe has this photograph. Uh, but it's still worth going to do if you've never done it, because then you too can have the ubiquitous photograph. OK, so here we are. So let's kind of work through how this might work. I'm just going to pick architecture. I'm going to go here to the just where it says presets, go over to the grid view and click on that icon. And now I'm in the grid view and I can start to pick on things that I like. I'm going to start doing that. I'm clicking on cameras of different looks that appeal to me. I think you can see that an image like this works exceedingly well in even the presets here. Pretty great. Keep coming down. All right, good enough. So now what do we do? We go to the top again. I'm going to click on the uh, folder that has the camera on it. And now I have a good look at the uh, presets and whether I like them. And just by way of review, I can now click on the tag up here at the top right. Click on the tag and click on one of these that I'm particularly fond of, like Dingy Attic. And that's going to give me others that are very similar. Here's Dingy Attic here. And I can go through here and see if there's something that I like. Warm brown light. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Hopefully that fear of a thousand presets has just melted away. Um, and now we're using our inspiration for a tonality usually is what draws me to something. And now I can look at these and say, okay, which one do I want to go to? And let's kind of review. I well, I kind of like this dirt and earth. Uh, I like dingy attic. So let's do dingy attic. Okay. And so there we go. Just that easily, quite honestly. And when I did this image, that's honestly how easy it was. It was because it was such a good image to use for this. And now I can come over here to the right side. I want to click on my histogram so I can see that. I notice that it's kind. Of did that. So what am I going to do? Go right down to this tone. I'm going to bring my blacks over. Brighten that up a little bit because it feels like it's a little overdone. It's okay to have some black there, by the way. Bring my mid-tones over just a little bit. I, quite honestly, I like a lot of what it's doing. Other than that, I'm going to bring my structure slider over because I think these uh, prison cell images look great when you crank that structure up a little bit. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go back up to the restyle. And the reason I'm going to go to restyle is, remember, the restyle is what is presenting me with that effect. And so if I'm feeling like it's too much, I'm going to use the mask there most of the time. And in this case, I'm just going to use the Edge Aware brush to introduce you to that. So all the Edge Aware brush does is... And I can make the brush bigger or smaller here, the strength of it here, the hardness. The hardness has to do with, you know, the, maybe a better way is the softness. So the, the more I bring this over to the right, the harder the brush becomes. As a matter of fact, all the way right, it's, it's a hard edge brush. Normally, you want to have a soft edge to it. Somewhere around the middle is what I like. And now, by the way, if you want to be able to use the traditional bracket keys next to your letter P to make the brush bigger or smaller, you make sure that you have to click on that brush size here. And now I can make it bigger or smaller by tapping my bracket keys. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. And I can come in here where this feels a little dark to me. And I can paint. And notice what the edge aware just did. It does a great job of only grabbing the pedestal of the chair. And then I hit this little panel here. It took away the... Uh, so we can see it better. Oh, I've got to go back here and click on it. Okay, whoop. 
and now I can paint on this and notice how that it, it's crazy good technology. The Edge Aware brush, if you want to do fine tuning uh, in, on masking, the Edge Aware brush is fantastic. I'm going to come up to this white part of this here. But I really want this chair to stand out. I'm going to go on these arms here. And look at that. Look at the mask up here to the right. There's the arms, there's the white band, there's the pedestal, there's the front of it here. If I want to go back and, and say, yeah, that, that little footstool there, I'd rather have it be red, just go down here to the mask dialog box, click on reveal, and bring it back in again. I think that looks a little better there. So now I've just removed uh, that, or, or I've put the effect back in, right? I, took, I, I removed it from the mask. And let me make the picture a little smaller again, and there we go. So there's a real-world application of how this could work on something that you might be doing. Let's hit OK. So what did we start with here? We started with this, and through Restyle, we've created that. I'm pretty thrilled with that. I don't know about you folks, but pretty cool. So it starts to make it really, really fun. All right, let's go and say, all right, so we're working on, you know, dingy cars and we're working on grungy uh, penitentiaries. So does this work on other things? You know, like how about flowers? Does it, does it work on flowers? Well, let's find out. Oh, you know what I want to do? I'm going to... Sorry, see, I should check my notes first. I'm going to create a background layer because I want to be able to show you one thing that you might want to do here. So let's do that again. Sorry about that. All right. So there's our pretty interesting looking flower. I'm going to hit reset. <laughs> That's with everything we did on the last precept of that chair in the prison. <laughs> it's the sticky settings and that's why we saw that. Okay, I'm going to go over to the left side and this time I think I'm going to click nature. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to click on the grid. And now I'm going to start to get some looks for this. And so I'm going to start right away clicking on something like that. I like that. Click on the camera. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Keep coming down. Presets sometimes take some time. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. I like that. It doesn't look at anything like an African blue uh, poppy, but it's kind of cool. Ooh, I like this one a lot. Light blue petals. Okay. So, in the spirit of time here, so there we have, um, and again, if I want to do similar ones, I go to the tag, I click on, click on this, and now it's going to go find things that are similar to that one. I'm just going to click back on the tab here. I can click on a color, and it's going to find those are in the same family of color, again, based on the the first and second, the, the, the first and secondary colors in that color strip, right? That's what it's doing. So maybe this one I can add to it, or maybe this Caribbean light. Those are kind of interesting. All right, so there's what we have. So now the, you just need to pick something. So I'm going to go ahead and pick I, this one I kind of like personally. I like what it does right out of the box, actually, but now we have the ability to fine-tune that uh, layer. So let's go over and see what these do, because I really don't know. Ah, okay. So we can change the hue. I don't think I want to do that, so I'm going to click on, double-click on here. But I think it's a saturation as I played with this one. My, there we go. So let's, isn't it funny? I go to the third color, which is green. And, and it tends to affect those stamens and make those more yellow, which I kind of like what it's doing there. And I can go to the luminosity, and I can make those darker or lighter. Okay, I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. Let's see what happens in the luminosity to some of the petals around on the flower. I think I like lightening that up a little bit. Uh, can I keep that in around the what it is. I'm going to keep that the same. Okay, that's all I'm going to do there, but watch this. I'm going to take the strength and zero it out. 
Nice. I love what that does. It made it nice and soft and very painterly. We're not done yet. Let's come down to the details section to that structure slider. Same thing. Bring it way to the left. Nice. Love it. I just love what this did. It's crazy good in my mind. Okay, that's all I'm going to do on this for the moment. That's what we used here. And the reason I kept it as a layer is I want to remind you that though we can do all of these things from within Restyle, what we can do now is, if you know anything about Photoshop, and for those who don't, this is always a good way to help you understand the value. Uh, I can blend this layer here, which is the, the Restyle layer, with my background layer. All I have to do is come to this opacity slider. And if I bring it all the way to the left, it's the original image. All the way to the right, it's only showing the Restyle. If I pull it somewhere in between, I get that. So. Here's the first, the, the uh, original image, and here's the new flower image restyled and blended back at roughly 70% with the original photograph. Kind of fun. So yes, it works on flowers too. One last thing that I would do, I'm just going to collapse this for speed, seeing as I do have about five minutes, which is great. Just for though, I know it's mostly about restyle, but I can't help but go into clarity because clarity is my new favorite thing. Well, restyle is kind of fun too, but I mean, clarity really gets used for almost everything I'm working on. In this case, it's having to build all of those presets ahead of time. That's why it's taking a little bit of time, so we'll just be patient. I'm going to come down here and hit reset because it's always going to remember the settings that we did from the, the previous time we opened this uh, program. Same thing, we've got the collections over here that gives you presets. You, uh, you can hit the grid view and look at it the same way. Uh, but in this case, uh, rather than choose one of those, I'm just going to come over here. And, and for those who might be new to Clarity, think about it as the Clarity slider, whether it be in Adobe Camera Raw or if you're in Lightroom, the Clarity slider there. But you have it on steroids now. You have four different sliders where you can affect that rather than one sledgehammer. And trust me, it's, it's spectacularly good. So I'm just going to add a little bit of detail back in there. I've probably overdone it because I really like the softness, but I just want to remind you that you can do this. And by the way, uh, remind you, I'm going to pull it up a little higher on purpose here. I can click the histogram open again, make sure that's looking good. I can maybe darken that up just a little bit with my black, so I'm going to do that. I can open the mask. Here we have our same friendly mask. In this case, I'm going to get the normal and I'm going to go in there with a brush, make sure I click on the brush so I can use my bracket keys and make it bigger or smaller. And I'm going to hide that adjustment on the edges here because I really liked what that softening did. So basically, I've got that way too. I need to make that harder brush. There we go. Coming in here. And so what I've basically done is I've used clarity to really make these stamens in the middle pop but I've been able to use the mask to leave all of the outside petals of the flower soft. So just a, a quick introduction to uh, clarity in, in that I use quite frequently. And by the way, uh, you know, don't, don't forget you've got black and white effects, which is crazy good as well. So uh, though we're just talking about restyle, there are lots of wonderful uh, plugins that are part of the entire collection. So age to fact, and we can go through you know, all sorts of things here, detail smooth and on and on, and get pretty cool looking black and white effects with the click of a button, and then you have all the adjustments over here on the right side. So we're not, again, it's not about all this, so I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on those other pieces of software, but I just I do like to always introduce and remind folks that, especially when we get to the end of this and we're talking about, yes, you should want to feel inspired to run out and buy resale. That's all well and good, but please don't miss out on the opportunity to for the other wonderful plugins that Topaz has besides Restyle. That's kind of my point, is to refresh your memory, or for those who are new in the webinar today, for them to understand that um, the entire collection makes a lot of sense, especially with the discount that you're going to hear about at the end. So, okay, let's uh, see if we have time for one more. Let's look at, yeah, we got about three minutes. 
So let's go to daily. So how does it work on people? Is, uh, would be the question. Let's see. Restyle. This is my buddy Dalen, who's a bum, by the way. But uh, and the reason he's a bum is because he's just moved out to California and he's no longer available to uh, to be my model at some of these locations. So I guess I could, you know, send him airfare and bring him back. So let me look at my notes here. Let's go to Street. Uh, and then let's go to here, and we can start to pick on things that we might like. Uh, by the way, the, the black and white looks are kind of good. Let's keep coming down here. Ooh, I like this. I like the dark ecru on this. Uh, sorry, they're taking a little long to build these previews. So I do want to get down to this red contrast because I know that's one I liked. Okay, we'll click that, come back up here, click on the camera folder. And we have some that we like. If we click on whoop, yeah, if we click on that, we see what that one looks like. If I go back here to my grid view, go back up here, I can click on the black and white one and see that. See how I feel about that. Bigger. Uh, I'm going to go back to the grid view, and by the way, let's go look at the checkbox. That's the one we've just plugged in there. All right. So we'll go here, and I think I like this here. Let's work on this one for a second. So does it work on people? I think the obvious answer to that is yes, it does. It adds a, a really nice look, and you can do the same things again. So let's make that a little bigger. Sorry about that size. Uh, let's come over here on the right side, and we can bring that texture strength down. Maybe not all the way. Come down to the structure, bring that down. I kind of like what that does. I'm looking, you know, in my mind, what I'm seeing here is a a more faded. Uh, look rather than this, you know, realistic photo look. So it's more stylized, and I like the fading of that there. And again, you know, you could come up and start playing with these and see what they do to your heart's content. So I think you get the idea. Uh, on this one, what I was going to do again was the masking. Uh, I'll just real quick go to color range again, and if I go to color range, I can pull, let's say I wanted to keep that back on his face, the original color, there we go. What it's doing is bringing back the original color. It looks terrible here, so maybe a better thing to do is to go to the seat here on the chair. If I bring it down on the seat of the chair, and then I start playing with the size and the sensitivity, whoops sensitivity up. It's pretty much getting mostly just the chair. And by the way, if, if we don't want it to bleed over, no big deal. Just go get a regular brush. Uh, I'll make that somewhat harder. And then I can start painting up in here. I'm sorry, I want to paint. I want to uh, hit the other way. Oops. Oh yeah, I've got that brush way too big. There we go. That's better. And then I can... I want to do the other way here, guys. Sorry, I wanted to get rid of that black. Here, so I think I think you get the idea. I overdid it, so I I can now get rid of where that was bleeding over a little bit onto his gloves and so forth. If I go in and paint with white, now it's just masking the chair only. I think you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to finish with that, <coughs> and then let me see my final thoughts here. So, again, to me, I see restyle as fun creative, a lot like some of these wonderful creative things that we've been able to do on an iPhone, which I thoroughly love doing. And they're very affected looks, and it's a blast. Uh, and they're shared a lot. Instagram comes to mind. Uh, Hipstamatic comes to mind. You can create those types of looks in your big boy images. And again, I can't stress enough, don't forget about all the other great plugins that come with Topaz in their complete collection that now it, it does include everything they make, including this new Restyle plugin. And uh, I think Nicole will probably offer you a great discount if you're interested in getting their whole suite. And, and with the discount, I believe it's going to come out to like 266 bucks instead of $380 for the entire suite of, of products. Um, 
And keep in mind as well that all the updates, and they're already working on an update, and I've already been feeding back information on Restyle, how I think it could be even a ton better. Uh, and they will come out with version 1.1, not too distant future, and all those updates are free. The model that Topaz has is free, so that's great. And with that, I'm going to turn the time back to Nicole for questions. Oh, is she there? Hello, Nicole. I'm here. Ah, there she is. Good I just have to turn my yeah, I have to turn my sound on. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome to see how you're using Restyle, and we've had a lot of feedback already. So thank you very much. Were, were there a lot of people demystified on being overwhelmed? I hope. Uh, yeah, I think so. We had quite Good. a few comments uh, saying, you know, kind of an overwhelming amount of presets, and this helps to kind of zero in on the exact look. It's really so. not an overwhelming amount. <laughs> it seriously isn't. I mean, you, the whole point of the program is to have that many so that you can find something to get inspired by. So, yes. And not only that, but a big shout out to Nicole. Um, who who went and did all these? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So she she's the genius behind most of those. So you know, I don't want people getting upset at Nicole for a thousand. <laughs> she put her heart and soul into every one of those. That's funny. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. So I have a lot of questions already, but if you do have any other questions for John specifically, I'm going to go ahead and ask him questions here over the next ten minutes. So go ahead and type them into your questions questions module now. Good. All right, so we had quite a few people. I know Troy was asking, and I think Thomas said, uh, barber chair photo taken inside Eastern State Penitentiary, correct? He says, been Correct. there, but not as an inmate. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I've been there as an inmate, as a photographer as well. <laughs> That's funny. All right. <laughs> that is where it is. Eastern State Penitentiary, Pennsylvania. Yep. Okay. That's right. In Philadelphia. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Nick said, at first I thought Restyle was just quad tones plus one, but now I'm thinking that adaptive exposure, detail, and contrast manipulation have been mapped very thoroughly and very well, too. I think you have some brilliant developers at Topaz. <laughs> I, think I would so agree too, with that. Nick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. And remember, folks, this is version one. Trust me, it's going to get better. It really is, because uh, Nicole and I have already been talking about why. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get better. You know, there's some great new thoughts that are going to come through. Yeah. For sure. All right. Let's see here. Um, uh, Frank has says he understands it much more now. So thank you very much. You're welcome, Frank. All right. I had somebody. I lost it already. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Something about. Um, your favorite lens for city shoots, Mary had asked that. Well, you know, that's evolving, actually. Um, my, my good friend Tony Sweet and I will be heading down to Cuba again, and, and that workshop is full. It's in uh, January. This will be our third trip down there. And I find I will be bringing this year only my Fuji XE1 system. I'll not be bringing any of my Nikon gear. I'm in love with the Fuji XE1, and... Uh, and I have an 1855 lens, which is an APS-C size sensor, so that's something like a 2880. Uh, and then I also have a, a, a 14 millimeter prime, so I can go a little wider, which will be fine. That's essentially a 20 millimeter lens. Uh, so for city, I mean, for these like the cars and so forth, I like to be wide. Uh, so I was using a 1635 on a on a full frame Nikon, my D3X, for a lot of my city shooting for these types of uh, shots. But then I wanted to start doing the people photography, which I really want to focus on solely this year. Um, a little bit longer lens, that 1855 zoom, kind of a mid range telephoto, worked really really well for that. Um, and hopefully that that's about right. So 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 if you're thinking in full frame, you know something like your 2470 works well. 50 millimeters is a great sweet spot for doing a lot of people stuff and detail things. But I wouldn't want to be without a wide angle lens for cityscapes. So you know with this car, I'm sure that was shot at something like 30, uh, 30 uh, 16 millimeters or so. Cool. All right. And lastly, what are your uh, top Topaz plugins that you use? 
Uh, well, it's easy. Uh, clarity has become number one without a doubt. Detail I still use quite frequently. Adjust is still the bread and butter for getting that affected uh, look. Uh, clarity to me doesn't give that affected look as easily, so I tend to go there for the natural things. But if I'm in a prison or even some things in uh, Cuba street scenes and I want to grunge it up a little bit and give it that affected look, I'll go back into adjust. Uh, I use the black and white program all the time. I use, I actually, I use like three different black and white plugins from three different companies. Um, there, they all do things differently. And the way I like to describe the Topaz one is, if you're looking for really great presets for black and white because you just don't want to be bothered with all that stuff on the right side. I jump in all the time, and when I'm struggling to find a look that I'm not getting. Off times I can come into those presets in the black and white the plugin from Topaz. So that that's kind of those would be the ones I live in quite frequently. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. This has been awesome. A ton You're of great welcome. feedback, and I think it was a good um, introduction into how to use Restyle for a lot of people. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for showing up, everybody, and have a great weekend. Yes, absolutely. Bye, everybody. See you soon.